Time now for the morning rush. We start with the big talker. Two U.S. lawmakers are calling for an investigation into the Postal Service in New Mexico. This despite officials within USPS saying some major issues at Albuquerque post offices are now fixed. A local union member says some structural damage that had not been repaired did delay mail recently and that workers had also had to deal with filthy conditions and pests. The Arizona USPS District Office took oversight of New Mexico post offices a few years ago. They say the issues are fixed now. Two U.S. lawmakers say this was after they wrote letters to the Postmaster General and Inspector General. This morning, we are waiting to learn the name of the infant who died over the weekend at UNM Hospital. Now, this is in connection to the deadly Theroux bus crash. This is the ninth person to die as a result of that crash. Now, the Greyhound bus and semi crashed over a week ago. The hospital says the infant who died was in the neonatal ICU. Now, officials also say there were only two NICU patients at the hospital from the bus crash. UNM Hospital officials say that the Office of the Medical Investigator will determine the cause and manner of death for the infant. More details on survivors recovering are coming up in the Five Facts. On to breaking overnight news for you. Police are investigating after a shots fired call in the 700 block of Monroe in southeast Albuquerque. Details are limited at this time, but police say one person was injured. No word on the extent of the injuries or if police have anyone in custody. Kristen. Looking at just a few spot storms over the mountains and eastern side of the state today, this model wants to show us nothing, but it's a very similar setup for tomorrow. A few spotty storms over the higher terrain. Albuquerque hoping for a stray shower coming in today and tomorrow. David? A white uh, Dallas police officer has been arrested on a manslaughter charge for allegedly shooting a black man. This is after she says she mistook the victim's apartment for her own. The Texas Department of Public Safety says Amber Geiger fatally shot 26-year-old uh, Botham rather, Jean on Thursday after her shift. Now, lawyers for Jean's family have been calling for her arrest, claiming she was receiving favorable treatment. Police are now searching for the person who killed a man found dead in Durango. The Durango Herald reports that the badly decomposed body of 48-year-old Dylan Gerald Douglas was found in late June just west of Elevita Court. Police said the skeleton and body had injuries that were more than likely done at the hands of someone else. Anyone with information should call the detective on the case. You can find that information at alwaysonkrqe.com. Well, police are still searching for the person who shot and killed a Santa Fe man in his backyard more than a month ago. This is fellow cyclist honor Robert Romero. Over the weekend, his friends carried his ashes to the top of the Sangre de Cristos where a cross was placed. Now, on July 30th, police say Robert Romero was shot and killed in the backyard of his Las Casitas uh, neighborhood home in Santa Fe. A man accused of dragging his son into traffic at night, allegedly threatening to kill himself and the boy, is out on pretrial supervision this morning. The judge says it's because he has no failure to appear history. Police say on Thursday, Francisco Bustamante and his girlfriend got into a fight near Coors and Fortuna. The police say the girlfriend tried to get away from Bustamante with their son, but... They say he followed them to a bus stop and started beating the girlfriend. Then they say he grabbed their son and ran out into traffic. Well, the idea to buy a new police helicopter for APD could be heard in committee tonight. City councilors on the Finance and Government Operations Committee will consider the proposal to use $5.2 million worth of, or rather from the general fund, to purchase the aircraft. Now, the current helicopter is outdated and has trouble taking off in hot temperatures. This morning, police are asking for your help tracking down a large inflatable duck. It was stolen from a local business. Albuquerque Hot Tubs and Swim Spas manager says someone took off with their nine-foot duck. It happened sometime overnight at the East Pan American Frontage Road location. That's between Paseo del Norte and San Antonio. The manager says the store mascot is worth around 600 bucks. If you have any information about the duck or where it might be, you're asked to call police. Well, this morning, you can help an Albuquerque family after their dog was shot in the eye by an intruder. Now, the owners say an intruder came into their yard near Coors and Montano. On the family's security camera, you can hear Rosie's barking and a single shot. Her eye was hit in the process. Now, the intruders who trespassed on the neighbor's property did not take anything, and the family has created a GoFundMe page to help with Rosie's vet bills. We have a link to help out at alwaysonkrqe.com. Kristen? is gaining strength as it moves towards the east coast. It is expected to strengthen to a Category 4 storm, packing winds of 150 miles per hour. Now, the storm is expected to make landfall later this week, but people are already along the shore, filling sandbags and gathering supplies. Both the Carolinas and Virginia are now under states of emergency. 
This comes as two other hurricanes are on the move in the Atlantic. One could threaten the Caribbean islands later this week. So we'll keep tabs on that active Atlantic basin. But that moves us into our forecast here at home. Metro threat index only out of one because of a stray storm. Everything else looks good. David? A New Mexico veteran and brewery owner is offering to donate people's disregarded Nike clothes and gear to local shelters. Now, you'll remember controversy was sparked by Nike's new ad campaign featuring Colin Kaepernick. Now, people angered by this have been throwing away their Nike gear and burning it in some cases. Henry Lackey, owner of the Route 66 Junkyard Brewery in Grants, posted on Facebook that the brewery would give out free food in exchange for any Nike items brought in. He will accept donations through the end of the month. The State Fair continues today with Senior Celebration and Healthy Living Day. There will be several vendors that will be providing health screenings and flu shots. There will also be information on the upcoming Senior Games set to be held in Albuquerque next summer. That's where seniors will compete in games ranging from pickleball to softball, even cycling. Sounds like a lot of fun. Definitely. Well, there are several other events to catch out at the fair today, including the Green Chili Cheeseburger Challenge, which I will be one of the judges on hand for. And it's happening in the courtyard of the Agriculture Building on the west side of Main Street. Green Chili must be from a New Mexico homegrown location. And the first 100 fairgoers who want to participate in the People's Choice judging will be given a ballot at 2 this afternoon. Winners from that will be announced at 4. Kristen. Time now for a check on traffic. We do have a crash to tell you about this morning. This has the right lane blocked of eastbound Paseo at I-25. Already seeing delays in the area, so give yourself some time this morning. Also, I-40 westbound near Louisiana. Tracker out there in about this morning, and you can see there's a few cars out in front, but no major delays on I-40 at the moment. The horror movie The Nun topped the box office in its first week out. It's estimated The Nun brought in $53.5 million in North American ticket sales. A best for the Conjuring franchise, Crazy Rich Asians, second followed by the R-rated Jennifer Garner revenge movie, Peppermint. Even just the <laughs> one single shot of The Nun terrifies me. I don't think I'm going to be watching this. Uh, All right, switching gears to the five facts. At number five, there are several events to catch out at the fair today, including the Green Chili Cheeseburger Competition. And uh, there will be a panel of judges, including myself, but you have a chance to get in on this, too. It's all happening out at the courtyard of the Agriculture Building on the west side of Main Street. The first 100 fairgoers who want to participate in the People's Choice judging will be given a ballot at 2 this afternoon. Ah, oh, that looks delicious. Mm -hmm. Number four now, here's a bizarre crime story for you this week. Police are asking for your help tracking down a large inflatable duck stolen from a local business. Albuquerque Hot Tubs and Swim Spas manager says someone took off with their 9-foot duck some time over the weekend at the East Pan American Frontage Road between Paseo and San Antonio. The store mascot is worth around $600. At number three, plenty of sunshine in that seven day forecast. High temperatures above average. The upper 80s to low 90s, really, for as far as we can see. Overnight lows in the low to mid 60s, just watching the mountains for a few spotty storms. And number two, we are waiting to learn the name of the infant who died over the weekend at UNM Hospital. This is in connection to the deadly Theroux bus crash. Now, that brings the death toll now to nine. The Greyhound bus and semi crash happened between Gallup and Grants just over a week ago. Now, the hospital says the infant who died was in the neo natal ICU. Officials also say there were only two NICU patients at the hospital from the bus crash, but would not give any further details. Now, the hospital continues to treat three patients from the crash. Last week, News 13 spoke with the mother who gave birth to twins two months prematurely following that crash, and all three were transferred to UNM Hospital and are expected to stay there for at least a month. On to number one. Now, this morning, two U.S. lawmakers are calling for an investigation into the Postal Service in New Mexico. This despite officials within USPS saying some major issues at Albuquerque post offices are now fixed this morning. Those issues were trickling down to you and your mailbox. A local union member says that some structural damage that had not been repaired did delay mail. And workers had, also, had to also deal with filthy conditions and even pests like bats. The Arizona USPS District Office took oversight of New Mexico post offices a few years ago. A spokesperson out of Arizona says they were made aware of the issues and have already fixed them. Two U.S. lawmakers say that was after they wrote letters to the Postmaster General and Inspector General. 